into the word of the Lord on tonight. Thank God for our ministers being online. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. And it reads, starting at the 11th verse, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. <clears throat> but strong meat belonging to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Let's go back to that 11th verse once again. <clears throat> of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. We are dull of hearing. We have dull hearing. Amen. That is my lesson on tonight. When we look in Hebrews 5 and 11, the word sluggish is used early on. But if we go over to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, it says that they be not slowful, but followers of them who through faith and impatience and patience, faith and patience, inherit the promises. You will not inherit the promise without faith and patience. And then when we go back over to our foundation text for tonight. In Hebrews chapter 5 and 11, the readers are called at the end of that sentence, are called those who are reading. Paul is saying, you're dull of hearing. Let me read that scripture again. It says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Paul is saying, I got many things to say to you, but it's hard for me to move on from the milk. Why? Because you are dull of hearing. Now, if you get upset tonight, get upset with the Lord, with the word of the Lord, because this is what the word of the Lord is saying on tonight. We are dull of hearing. Now, being dull of hearing means it indicates laziness. Laziness. The Bible definition suggests the idea of sluggishness or indolence which means avoidance of activity, which simply means laziness. People of God, laziness should not be named among us. A person who is dull of hearing does not have to be lazy in every area of life. Uh, many of us are hard workers at work. <clears throat> We're hard workers on our job. We're hard workers keeping our homes together and keeping our homes clean. But we are dull of hearing when it comes to learning about the word of the Lord. Paul said you're dull of hearing. <clears throat> now let's examine Hebrews 5, this five, chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Now I didn't get a tickle in my throat till I started talking, but that's all right. We're going to get through here. Verse 12 says, but though by this time you ought to be teachers, by now, Paul is saying, you ought to be teachers. You need to teach you again, but sometimes you need someone to teach you again. You have heard word after word, messages after messages, man of God, woman of God, preaching the words of God. But you need someone to teach you again. First, the principles of the oracles of God. <clears throat> and you have come to need milk and not solid food. That first 13 verse says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. The Bible calls them a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is able, 
by reason to use their senses to discern both good and evil. It seems like the epistle of writer of Hebrews is addressing the problem among the people of God. Mm. He's not preaching to the unsaved. He's preaching to the church. Paul admonishes the church. When we look in chapter two, verse one of Hebrews, he says, therefore we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. I just said, we have message after message, the word of God come in right behind the other, and, but we have let it slip. In today's vernacular, that right, the, the scripture said, pay close attention to the message you have heard, lest you let them slip away. How many of us, this is what they used to say when I was in school, the parents would say, I'm telling you, it go in one ear and go out the other way. Dull of hearing. In chapter three, verse one, Paul tells them, but to consider Jesus. And it says, wherefore of holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Consider Jesus. In the eighth verse of chapter three, he said, don't harden your heart like the Israel did in the wilderness. This is why the Bible speaks that in the last day, there's going to be a great falling away from the church. You've heard the word of God. You profess holiness. You profess to be saved. You profess to be born again, but you let it slip away. Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. And then verse 12 of chapter three of Hebrews says, take care lest you have an evil heart of unbelief. You can be saved, but unbelief still reside in you. Because it's the scripture say, take heed, brethren. He ain't talking to the world. Lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. If God said it, he's going to do it. Don't you dare let unbelief crawl in. Don't you let dare let, let, let unbelief talk to your mind. <clears throat> and, and when we look at verse chapter 4 and 11 he says be diligent to enter into God's rest lest you fall by disobedience and then the 14th verse hold fast to your confession hold fast to your confession people are reading your life they may never read the Bible but they're reading your life they're watching you as you go and come they're watching what comes out of your mouth. No, I don't say that you go about speaking in tongue all day because if you got to do that all day long, every day, there is something wrong. You can't speak in English and all you can do is speak in tongue. And I believe it's speaking in tongue, but you speak in tongue, but you can't speak to your coworker. You can't speak to your neighbor. You can't speak to some family members. <coughs> Then when we go back to chapter 5, verse 11 of our text, it says, of whom we have much to say. Paul said, we got much to say. And it's hard to explain because you have become dull of hearing. That's why the same message got to keep coming over and over and over again because you heard it, but it went in one ear and it went out the other ear. Now, what is the problem that Paul is concerned? Paul is, you have become, he's telling the church, you have become dull of hearing. He's telling them, pay close attention. Woo, glory to God. You gave a testimony and then you took it back. Consider, don't harden your heart. Fear, be diligent, hold fast to the confession of your faith. Now, Paul is giving them the prescription, and I would say for the disease of dullness of hearing. That is a disease. The question tonight is, is your hearing dull? Do you have the disease dull of hearing? Let's take the two words one at a time and look at them at other places in Hebrew where this term is used. 
Done, dullness, <clears throat> you know, when we think of doneness, we think because I'm a Koji girl, I love my rhinestones. I love my flesh. We think that it does mean boring or uninterested when we say dull. It denotes that which is slow or sluggish. Woo! When I would do good because I'm slow or sluggish, evil takes over. It denotes, it describes what takes place with great difficulty. It's used one other time in the New Testament when we look at Hebrews 6, verse 11 to 12. It says, and we desire that each of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish. Let me stop right there. Agape, we cannot become sluggish over the things of God. Yeah, 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 it's oppressed, it's oppressed, but we cannot become sluggish. Well, I might come and I might not come. I might do and I might not do, glory to God. What are you, what's wrong? You have dull of hearing, you have become sluggish to the things pertaining to the word of God, sluggish. Uh, and, and, and it's used one other time, as I said, Hebrews 6, verses 11 through 12. Now, <clears throat> the opposite of dullness is diligence or earnestness. Those who respond to the word of God with faith and patience. Let me say it, with faith and patience. We say we have faith, but we have no patience. Ooh, those who respond to the words of God with faith and patience are not sluggish or dull. Why am I not sluggish? Because I know he's going to do it. God's going to do it. I can praise God because I know it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's, ha it's turning around for me right now. It won't be this way always. Hallelujah. Those who respond to the word of God with faith and patience are not sluggish or dull. They embrace the truth and the will of God. Now, those who are dull or have dullness in hearing, they physically, like I said, hear the words, but the words do not have an impact of trust or action. Hearing, it is essential for the people of God to hear. Mm. Hearing, it, it, it is also used one other time in Hebrews chapter four and verse two. It says, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard, what are you hearing? The word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, faith in those who heard it. When you hear the word of God, you got to mix that with faith and patience. It may not happen overnight, but my faith tells me that it's going to happen. And because my faith tells me that I'm, it's going to happen, I'm going to wait on it because I know that he's able to do to do it. Dullness of hearing. So it's the same problem again, a word from God and a physical hearing, but there is no faith. Mm. Dullness of hearing. The word goes in the ear. It comes to the heart, the mind. It means dullness, slowness, and hardness. Simply means that you've heard the word. It comes to sit in your mind. But it means slowness and hardness. You got to walk in faith. And faith produces, get this, obedience. Faith produces obedience. Obedience. Let's look at the connection in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18 through 19. And to whom he did swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who do not obey. If you don't learn obedience, if you don't obey, the Bible said you will not enter his rest, the rest of Christ. So we see that we could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief would prevent you from entering into the rest of God. Notice the switch from disobedient to unbelief. Disobedient is the result of unbelief or a lack of trust in God. It comes when the word has no spiritual impact 
in the heart of the hearer. The word is going forth because the Bible said my word will not return to me more. If you've heard it Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, but it has no spiritual impact in the heart of the hearer. People of God, that's what we got to pray for and say, well, look like I'm praying for my children and they're getting worse because they're hearing the word. They're listening to the word of God, but it doesn't impact them any. Woo! It doesn't impact the heart of the hearer. They have heard it. And one thing about it, they can't wait for it before you stand upon the judgment and say, well, Lord, I didn't know. He said, you heard the word on this Sunday, that Sunday, the Sunday before that, Wednesday night, Thursday night, uh-huh, your mama took you to church, but it didn't enter their heart. It had no spiritual impact. And this leads to dullness of hearing. And church, that's a serious problem. Agape, we got a serious problem because there's dullness of hearing. And, and that is hearing without faith and without the, without the fruit of faith. It's hearing the Bible or the preaching of the word of God. Yet all you hear is interstate noise that's traveling on I-95. Or the way you hear music in the dentist's office or the way you hear recorded warnings at the airport. This is a smoke-free facility. Do not leave your bag unchecked. Come on now. You do, but you don't. What, what happens? You've grown dull to the sound of the word of God. It does not awaken or produce anything in you. When you hear the word of God, there ought to be a change. There ought to be a change. You can't continue to hear the word of God and nothing's changed. What it is, you become dull of hearing. <clears throat> that it doesn't awaken or produce anything in you. Now, just like, like I used the analogy of the airport, and you all have been to the airport, you can sit right through the call for your flight. Why? Because you tune out all the announcements. You can sit right through a move of God on Sunday mornings. You can sit right through the word of God coming forth. What did you do? You tuned out everything. Your mind is somewhere else. My body is here, but my mind is somewhere else. I'm going to back up a few moments and talk about this fruit of faith. I said dullness of hearing is hearing without faith and without the fruit of faith. When we look at John 15 and 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For ye can do nothing without me. And that seventh verse said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, get this now, this is Jesus talking. Ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you if you abide. And his words about in you means that you haven't become dull of hearing, that you have tuned out the word of God. And the enemy is running inroads in our lives because we have tuned out the word of God. And, and it's 15, it's John 15 and 16 say, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father, where? In my name. We want to go to God, but we don't want to go through the Son's name. Whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Ooh, God, do this, God, to Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I beseech you, go to the Father, grant this fruit to me. Now, what is fruit? Let's look at this fruit. Fruit is always the end product of a growth process. And it pertains to the relationship between the vine and the branches. The fruit belongs to the vine. The branch is an extension through which the vine is able to show its true nature when it produces the fruit. Jesus said we are to bear fruit. What is your nature? What sort of fruit are you producing? The fruit of faith. Faith is the result of growth. It is the result of abiding in Christ, just as Jesus talked about in John chapter 15. Fruit is what we grow as a result of the relationship between the branch and the vine. Ooh, gotta have a relationship between the branch and the vine. 
<laughs> the fruit is not what makes the relationship. So, so what is, Pastor, what are you talking about, the fruit of faith? It means that faith is the product of the vine, having its way through the branch. In short, faith, the fruit of faith is what the vine produces on the branch. Glory to God. We must get this. Fruit is what the vine produces on the branch. The fruit, while it's on the branch, it belongs to the vine. It belongs, it's on the branch, but it belongs to the vine. Because Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. The fruit belongs to the vine. The branch is the vessel or the extension of the life of the vine. Now, let me let me move on back to, to um. <clears throat> The dullness of hearing. What is the remedy? How do you get well? Your hearing has become dull. And I would say that it is a disease that has spread in the church. The text uses the term that we read in your hearing, baby and mature. A person who is dull of hearing is compared to a baby. And that's uh, Hebrews 5 and 13b that has to drink milk. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. There's nothing disease, there's nothing wrong about a baby's dependence on milk. When that baby get here, he can't eat a ribeye steak. But if a person is still a baby, when he's old enough to be a teenager, there is something wrong. There is a disease. You've been in church for 50, 11 years and you're still drinking milk. And the disease is called, let me give you the diagnosis, dullness of hearing. It's not a physical problem. Why? Why do you say that, Pastor? Deaf people can have some of the sharpest ears and blind people can be the sharpest seers. Woo. They, they, they are relying on the other senses to hear and to see. It is the failure, this is it, it is the failure to make use of the word her to nurture faith and bear the fruit of obedience. Dull hearing is passive, is lazy, and it does move beyond, and doesn't move beyond hearing. You heard it and that's it. You've done no work. You produce no fruit. You heard the word. You know what the word said, but that's all you did. You heard it but it produced no fruit. Now, the key verse to, this, to this, determining this remedy for dullness of hearing is in that 14th verse of Hebrew 5. Solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Consider this. <clears throat> if solid food is only palatable and digestible for the mature person, what food do you become, do you need to become mature so then that you can eat solid food? The answer is milk. Woo! You don't just start out in Christ eating solid food. But the answer was what you needed to become mature was milk. Maturity begins with the proper use of milk. The problem is not that milk is weak or that babies can't eat steak. The problem is that babies are not, are not exercising with the milk that they have. You see, the, the key word in verse 14 says, you become mature by what? Practice, exercise. You cannot exercise without movement. Habitual responses to milk. The milk has to stay down. You can't get upset every time the word of God can't get, checks you. Milk must stay down. A baby that constantly regurgitates the milk that it drinks from its mother or from the formula cannot grow and develop into a healthy baby. I don't know, not one baby born in this world and started eating food. Everybody started out with milk. I know we like to, you know, us mothers, we want to put a little pablum in there by the time they're two, three weeks old so to get them to sleep some. Glory to God. And, and that 14 verse of a strong meat belong to them that are full age. How old are you in Christ? Are you still on milk? Or are you able to digest meat? The problem is that the milk of the word is not producing growth towards a deeper faith and acts of righteousness. 
Why? Because we keep spitting up the milk of God's word. The milk of God's word should produce a new mind that practices discernment. We must, in this day and time that we live in, we must have discernment because of practice and mature. This is people, their senses have become trained to discern good and evil because I bet the milk of God's word. I'm maturing now. I'm learning how to discern good and evil. So the pathway to maturity and to solid biblical food is not first trying to become an intelligent person and debate the Bible, but becoming an obedient person. And I can't stress that enough. Many times we want to be debaters of the word of God. That's one thing I do not do. I don't debate the word of God. I tell you what it is. You can take it or leave it. There's no, no, no room for debate. So how do you drink the milk? The writer of Hebrews recognized that they needed to first teach, go back and teach the first principles again. And he, and he, he said, we got to go back to the elementary things, my God. Hebrews 6 and 1 said, therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. So the solution is not just jumping to a steak dinner and leaving the milk behind. You need the milk in order to grow to maturity so that we're able to able and can feast on the meat of God's word. Wouldn't it be nice that if we can kind of grow up in Christ, that we can move on to bigger and better things instead of keep saying, you got to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and without all your might. You got to be obedient to the word of God. You got to read the word of God. You got to pray. But if you notice, we're continuing to say the same thing over and over. Why? Because you're regurgitating the milk. The only time you're going to read the word of God is when it's shown on the screen. There ought not be a day to go by that you don't open up your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, get one. You don't open up your Bible app and read the word. That's what's going to get down in you. That's what's going to make you mature. I say that first, in order to walk, grow with milk, use the milk of God's word to maturity, you first got to drink the milk. That is, you got to listen and you got to read the word of God for yourself. Well, I don't know when I'm reading. Keep reading. Ask God to reveal it to you what you are reading. The second is be satisfied with the milk that God provides. True spiritual milk nourishment comes from the spirit of God alone. Stop that. I got to go over here and hear a word. I got to go over there and hear a word. I belong to this ministry right here, but I can't support this ministry because I need a word from over here, prophet so-and-so. What you need to do is get rooted and grounded in God. John 6 and 63 says, it is, the, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So we got to drink the milk. We got to be satisfied with the milk that God provides. We got to pray for discernment and wisdom. There is, not, there is no knowledge without discernment. Uh, Philippians chapter one, verse nine says, Philippians 1 and 9 says, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and discernment. The days that we are living in, we must have the spirit of discernment. You got to be able to discern when that snake is around. Woo, glory to God. You got to be, you can't be so gullible if somebody say, oh, you got it going on. You just gullible and that's a snake. And before you know it, you got a different spirit. Hallelujah. You got a different, you're standing off from your brothers and sister in Christ. But you know, I've got a connection with God. No, baby, you need to go somewhere and sit down and be taught the word of God and get on your, you got to have the, the in the last day, we must have knowledge and discernment. Discern what? We got to be sensitive to more perception. And what does that mean? We got to see how the word applies to real life. How does the word of God applies to real life where I am right now? And being able and willing to see yourself in the word of God. 
this is one thing we don't want. We don't, sometimes we don't read the word of God because we don't want to see ourselves in the word of God. Instead of just seeing what, what we can do, we can see how the word of God condemn other people. But we can't see ourselves with our shortcomings in the word of God. Uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 52 says, Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. The Pharisees not only refused to hear God themselves, come on here, but their false interpretation of the law took away the ability of others to see it clearly, to see the law clearly, simply meaning that you don't see yourself in the word of God. All you can do is point the faults in everybody else, Hinder, thereby hindering them. Hallelujah. One who is dull of hearing must first recognize, Houston, there is a problem. God, there is a problem. My hearing has become dull. My pastor has been preaching the same thing. The elders and the ministers and the missionaries have been preaching the same thing. Lord, what is wrong? Your hearing has become dull. And I say, so it is probably the first step is recognizing the problem. You can't correct something that you don't know exists. And this requires honest self-evaluation on our part. Honest. How many times do you self-evaluate yourself? Uh, I came up short over here. Lord have mercy, my mouth is flying off here. Come on now. You do a self-evaluation on you. Stop always, it's everybody else's fault. What part did you play in it? Self-evaluation. This requires honest self-evaluation. Paul said it this way in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself. Stop examining me and examine yourself. How is your life Measuring up to the word of God. One who is dull of hearing must quit partaking only of the milk. Mm. Quit partaking only of the milk. I want the easy stuff. Long as you're prophesying, I'm getting this, that, and the other. Everything is fine. But when I say you got to live right, you're going to hell if you don't live right. When I say you got to be holy, when I say you can't have a, a, a husband and a, and a girlfriend and a wife on the other side, come on now, glory to God. When I say it's holiness or hell, you don't want that. All I want is the good stuff. What are you doing? You are feasting on milk. But the Bible said the, the word of God is sharper than a two edge. It ought to cut us sometimes. The word of God should cut us sometimes. And the one who is dull of hearing must make a habit of studying the Bible. And I cannot stress this enough. Hebrews 5 and 14 said, but solid food is for the mature who because of practice, because of practice, reading their Bible, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. We got to stop not wanting to read the word of God. If you can stay on social media and you know every time somebody posts and you check in to see what they have posted, but you never read the word of God all week long. Ooh, check yourself. You got to make the habit of studying the word of God. I don't know how to study, but I know how to read. I'm going to start off in the book of Psalms and I'm going to read the whole entire 150, I believe it's 150 number of Psalms, 150 Psalms. Come on now. I'm going to do that. And then I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to be pointing me and directing me. Sometimes you just need to open up the book and say, Lord, where would you have me to read today? Because you know what I'm faced with. Show me which way I need to go, what I need to do. You have the people of God. We got to press on to maturity because it's easy to stay a baby. It's easy to complain. It's easy to hear the word of God and then do nothing. The enemy fools us. He fools us. We, he, we know what, we, what our objectives are. We know what we're supposed to be done, but then we hear the word. We hear, but then we do nothing. Dullness of hearing. We cannot afford to be lazy with the word of God. 
We cannot afford to be lazy with the word of God. We have to be diligent reading the word of God. We have to be diligent praying. Sometimes you need to pray for yourself. God is waiting on you to open up your mouth and pray for yourself. But when you read the word of God, you'll find yourself leaving off the word of God going into prayer. Mm -hmm. Let's not be dull hearers of the word of God. Hearers only and not doers. Father, we thank you for the word that has been shared on tonight. We thank you for everyone that's listening. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you would do us, that we would do a self-examination. And if anything is not right, if we find ourselves coming up short, if we have failed somewhere along, along the line, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Hallelujah. Try us one more time. We're going to turn around and we're going to be hearers and doers of the world. We're, word. We're going to act in faith and obedience. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Praise God. I